I am back with my video for Venus and Sagittarius. Now, this is for those who have Venus and Sagittarius, but also if you have Venus in the ninth house, some of this might apply to you. Or if you have Venus in aspect to Jupiter, or if it's an aspect to a planet in Sagittarius, some of this may apply to you as well. Now, Venus and Sagittarius can produce that stargazing couple, the couple that'll go to the planetarium together, or that will go outside and sit underneath the canopy of stars and talk about their dreams and aspirations together. So it is a very romantic type of Venus. So a key word that I came up with for Venus and Sagittarius is magnificent because these individuals do want to live a life that is somewhat or very magnificent. Magnificent meaning impressively beautiful, elaborate or extravagant, striking. And some synonyms for magnificent are spectacular, glorious, superb, wonderful, sumptuous, grand, palatial, exalted, lavish, opulent, and transcendent. Now, Venus and Sag individuals will either be giving or receiving sage advice. Sometimes it'll be a little bit of both. And they could seek advice from spiritual advisors, or they could be a spiritual advisor themselves. Now, I have Venus in the ninth house, and I am a spiritual advisor. Now this slide says extension brings space, space brings freedom, freedom brings precision, precision is truth. And all of that falls under the banner of Sagittarius. So a partner could require much space and freedom, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they want the freedom to see other people. Sometimes it does though. Precision. That means marked by exactness and accuracy of expression. Just think about the archer drawing back his bow and aiming for his target. About truth, the more space and freedom one has, the more they can remain true to themselves. So if you have Venus in Sagittarius, you could attract a partner that needs a lot of space and freedom, or you may value a lot of space and freedom yourself so that you can always remain true to yourself. Venus and Sagittarius individuals are attracted to that which is exotic, rare, extraordinary, and this can include people. Some Venus and Sag people can have an exotic look themselves. Exotic meaning of foreign origin or character, not native, introduced from abroad, but not fully naturalized or acclimatized. Exotic foods, exotic plants, strikingly unusual or strange in effect or appearance such as an exotic hairstyle, of a uniquely new or experimental nature, such as exotic weapons. Venus and Sag individuals tend to have an eclectic style. Each Venus and Sag individual has his or her own style and it usually looks good on them, but it could make other less adventurous signs look ridiculous. The females can have a tomboyish style, and even if they're wearing a dress, there will always be some type of edge to it. Now here's Tiana Taylor. She has Venus and Sagittarius. So here are some of her looks, very Venus and Sag. Omarion also has Venus and Sagittarius. So here are some of his looks. So again, that fashion sense is very much their own style. And there's always some type of flair to it, always something a little extra. Some Venus and Sagittarius folks wish money were no object, and some actually spend money as if it's no object. Now, Venus and Sag individuals can be extravagant in spending, they can be irresponsible, and they can have a tendency to splurge. Now, this energy could be projected upon a partner, so if the Venus and Sag individual is not like this, it'll be easy to attract a partner who can be extravagant in spending, irresponsible with financial management, Venus and Sag folks are not really phased by receiving a few hundred dollars because they know how quickly that money can go. That's chump change to them. They want stacks. They want long money. 
But oftentimes, you know, that long money isn't there. And sometimes they can still have that champagne appetite on a beer budget. So again, that whole money thing can be tricky for Venus and Sagittarius. But Venus and Sagittarius can manifest as big money. Some Venus and Sagittarius individuals have a penchant for gambling. Some win big, some lose big, but they can also gamble on things besides money, such as love. Giving people the benefit of the doubt comes with hard lessons. Now, Venus and Sag individuals do have a tendency to give people the benefit of the doubt, and that's where they could get caught up. They have this innocent until proven guilty approach to relationships, even if they see red flags in the beginning. So again, that can be that eternal optimism thing with Sagittarius. Now, Cancer may be the pimp and Leo the player, but Sagittarius is the Mac of the Zodiac. Now, it's easy for them to attract both men and women. And this is where the cheating or heavy flirting can come in. Now, as a Venus and Sagittarius individual, if you're not the Mac, you could attract a Mac. And this can be frustrating when you want them to settle down and commit to you. Venus and Sagittarius can produce romantic partners, romantic rendezvous and flings. A partner could go all out for your birthday or another special occasion. A partner could be inattentive when it comes to the little things, however. Having a love will conquer all approach to relationships. So Venus and Sagittarius can suffer from this issue. It's again, that Sag idealism and optimism, which can lead to blind faith. The honeymoon syndrome, fear of commitment, so Sag individuals or Venus and Sag individuals can jump quickly into a relationship only to regret it later when the honeymoon period is over. The couple that prays together stays together. Ideally, that is. Now, spirituality could be part of the glue that keeps the relationship intact. A partner could put you onto a religion or a spiritual belief system. Or if Venus is in challenging aspects, say to Jupiter or even Neptune, you could take issue with a partner's spiritual belief system, or they could take issue to yours. Putting all your eggs in one basket. So some Venus and Sagittarius individuals have this problem. Now that basically means according to Collins Dictionary, if someone puts all their eggs in one basket, they put all their effort or resources into doing one thing, so that if it fails, they have no alternative left. The key word here is diversify. So this can also mean betting the house, laying all the chips on the table. Love has no color. So for a lot of Venus and Sagittarius individuals, they are open to dating outside of their rates. So Venus and Sagittarius can produce interracial relationships. Long distance relationships is another possible manifestation of Venus and Sagittarius, as well as international love. Now I would bet that quite a few men who seek these mail order brides have Venus and Sagittarius, or they could have Venus in the ninth house, or where Jupiter is an aspect to Venus, or like I said, Venus is an aspect to a planet in Sagittarius. Traveling or vacationing with a partner could be part of the glue that keeps the relationship intact. Venus and Sag individuals are often lovers of knowledge, so they need a partner who can teach them some things, who has some degree of intelligence and can add to philosophical conversations. No dummies allowed. There also needs to be some degree of physical attraction, though, because Venus and Sag does have a strong physical component to it. These individuals can be very forgiving, can be forgiving to a fault. However, they forgive, but they don't forget. But unlike Venus and Scorpio, Venus and Sag is not prone to hold grudges. Venus and Sag individuals tend to be very generous and full of gratitude. 
you'll know how much they appreciate you. Venus and Sag individuals, they need a partner who can make them laugh. They need a partner that has a sense of humor. So you make a Venus and Sag individual laugh and you're halfway into their heart. Now with Venus and Sagittarius, you could be a blabbermouth or you can attract a partner who is a blabbermouth. I have this issue with my Venus in the ninth house. Now Venus and Sagittarius individuals will spill tea. They'll blurt out shit that should be kept to themselves. So with Venus and Sagittarius, you need a thick skin when it comes to being in relationships because you could attract a partner that is like this. Some Venus and Sag individuals have a loud, booming voice where they don't even need a microphone. Expect to be saying shh quite a bit. Or if they're not the ones with the loud voice, they can attract a partner who is a loud mouth. Now, Aaliyah is a perfect example. She had Venus and Sag, but she was rather quiet with her voice. But she was with Dame Dash, and Dame Dash is a loud mouth. Now, Venus and Sagittarius people are not vindictive, but they will resort to vigilante justice if need be. So here's Curtis Sliwa. He's founder of the Guardian Angels, a vigilante group in New York City. Now, he doesn't have Venus and Sagittarius, but his Venus in Aries is in sextile to Jupiter and Gemini. That is the whole vigilante justice aspect in his chart. Some Venus and Sagittarius people could be big show-offs. Ostentatious is a key word for this Venus. They can be over the top, so that's another phrase. Also, again, being over the top, ostentatious, very showy. Floyd Mayweather is a perfect example. While he doesn't have Venus and Sagittarius, his Venus in Aries is in trying to Neptune and Sagittarius. Being greedy, pigging out, don't know when to say when. Some Venus and Sag folks have weight problems for this reason. They can attract a fat or thick partner as well, and some of them might be attracted to people who are on the larger size. Now let's get into some celebrities that have Venus and Sagittarius. So Aaliyah has Venus and Sagittarius. Her Venus was conjoined to her midheaven. It was squaring her Saturn and Virgo and running parallel to her Uranus in Scorpio. So her Venus was at the eighth degree, right on her midheaven, which was also at the eighth degree. That eighth degree can pertain to death, but it can also pertain to her professional life, her reputation, the whole age conflict thing that she got into when she was with R. Kelly. Also that Venus and Sag on the midheaven points to her high profile singing career, her being very successful, being very much loved and adored, and how she was in a high profile relationship with R. Kelly, but also when she got with Dame Dash. And she was also with Jay-Z at one point briefly. Now Sagittarius rules air travel, and we know that she died in a plane crash. Venus parallel Uranus deals with the plane itself. And that square involving Saturn and Virgo points to the malfunctioning of that plane, death via plane crash. So she had Venus square Saturn, which can also point to her attracting opportunistic people, partners, being used and controlled. David Bowie, he has Venus in Sagittarius, even though he's a Capricorn. So his Venus is conjoined to his Sagittarius self node. So he could have been ordinary if he tried. Even his eyes are naturally exotic or extraordinary. So he has one dark eye and one light eye, as you can see. And this is how you create a far out Ziggy Stardust type of Capricorn. So, you know, Capricorn is more of that reserved type of personality. But when Venus is in Sagittarius, the person could be far out, which David Bowie was, especially in his early days when he had the whole Ziggy Stardust persona. Katy Perry. So uh, her whole song, uh, Dark Horse, reminds me of Venus and Sagittarius because Sagittarius rule horses. So I used to clown on that Dark Horse song and she is rather loud. LL Cool J has Venus and Sagittarius. So he's a Capricorn with Venus and Sagittarius. 
his Venus is at the 15th degree in the fourth house, that 15th degree points to his name, like ladies love Cool James because that 15th degree can produce a ladies man. It is the degree of the magician. So it also points to manipulation and also underhanded tactics, illusions. So his Venus is squaring his Virgo ascendant, is forming a quincunx with his moon in Cancer, his moon being at the 16th degree of Cancer, which can deal with illusion again. And it's in the 11th house, which can deal with unconventional type women. Now, LL seems like a straight up and down dude on the outside, but he's really wild as hell on the inside prefers exotic women to his plain Jane wife. And when I say exotic women, there's different definitions. People have different definitions on what they deem to be exotic. So in his case, it's all about that he shit. Remember he had that uh, part in uh, the Flavor in Your Ear remix, that Craig Mack song? Well, in that one part, he was saying he shit, which he was talking about he, she, that he's into transgender uh, women. So in that video, he's rapping alongside of a transgender model. So yeah, he's been married for years, but he likes to get broken off by the he shits every now and then. Keisha Cole has Venus in Sagittarius opposing her moon in Gemini. And that deals with her being horrible in interviews. Like her attitude stinks. Even a radio personality checked her attitude one time. Also, this can point to her having issues with generosity with her siblings like Nephi, and also her generating negative press. Now, recently, she was called an elder by Nick Cannon because she's dating this Nico dude who is 15 years younger than her. Her Venus is at the eighth degree of Sagittarius, and that eighth degree can point to issues with control and also uh, a big age difference. Her Mars is in Leo, which explains why she likes them young. Now, uh, this is just a quote from that interview. So from this website, it says, Cole Kale, which is Nico Kale, the uh, baby daddy, boyfriend, her, whoever he is, her husband, whoever, and their kids will be starring in an upcoming BET baby special titled Keisha Cole, My New Life. So Keisha and Nico are on the promo trail. That's that Venus opposition, Moon and Gemini. After recently welcoming their son in the world, Yep, Nick went there with ease, we might add, and called Keisha Nico's elder. And as we said above, she couldn't handle it and let Nick know. I'm not a fucking elder, she responded. I am not his fucking elder. No, Mariah's your elder. I am not his elder. Now that cracks me up because her Mars and Leo is in Quincunx to her Capricorn South Node. <laughs> All right, Cuba Gooding Jr. He has Venus conjoined to Neptune and Scorpio, squaring Jupiter and Virgo. This deals with him overstepping his boundaries. He groped this lady on the street and was arrested for it. Also in 2012, the New Orleans bartender accused Gooding of pushing her after she asked him to leave the establishment. He had allegedly became angry with fans who wanted to take pictures with him. Police issued a misdemeanor battery warrant for his arrest. CNN reported at the time, but the bartender eventually dropped all charges. I'm thinking he probably paid the chick off. So with this Venus and Sagittarius, square Jupiter and Virgo in particular, that could point to him suffering from poor judgment. And Sagittarius can have that, you know, horrible anger problem. Also with that Venus square Jupiter, that points to him fearing being typecast in black roles. And this caused him to pass on some really good films. I think he was chosen, they, he was um, selected for Amistad, but he turned it down because he didn't want to be typecast into black roles. Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore has her Venus as Sagittarius. She's an Aquarius though, uh, born January 24th. So she has Venus and Sag, Queen Kong, Saturn and Taurus. This is her giving her spouse the benefit of the doubt, and that's going to cost her big time. So according to cheatsheet.com, the outlet reported that Daly, who soon to be her ex-husband, was distant during their first year of marriage, but the Real Housewives of Atlanta star didn't think anything of it, chalking it up to Daly living in New York. But as it turns out, the outlet claimed Daly allegedly has a secret life in Brooklyn, 
where he has a mistress with whom he shares several children. Mark has always been distant from Kenya, and she assumed it was because he lived in Brooklyn, but found out that he's been seeing another woman that he has kids with in Insider Ditch. Mark has been seeing this woman for years and loves her very much. The source added that Daly had only started seeing more because she promised to pay off his debts. That's Venus and Sagittarius, Quincung, Saturn, and Taurus all day. Jake Gyllenhaal, he's a popular actor with Venus and Sagittarius. Not much to say about him, but now I know why I always find him sexy because of that Venus and Sagittarius. Mary J. Blige, she has Venus conjoined to Neptune and Sagittarius. So she has been known to put all her eggs in one basket with Kendu being her husband and manager and where she was giving him the benefit of the doubt where she was generous to a fault. She had that love will conquer all bullshit and Kendu turned out to be a lying sleazy con man. So this is in her own words. When asked about her divorce, she said, I'm living. I'm not happy about a lot of things. I thought someone loved me, right? Turns out he was a con artist and he didn't. And now he's coming after me for all my money. When you come out of something like that, you realize you were never the one. There was someone else that was his queen. I got played, I got suckered. I have to keep smiling and keep my spirits up because this is designed to kill me. Venus conjoined to Neptune and Sagittarius getting with a con artist. Lamar Odom has Venus and Sagittarius. So his Venus is conjoined to Mercury and Sagittarius. That can point to his relationship being broadcasted in the media, being on the reality show, keeping up with the Kar Kardashians. Also, his Venus and Sag um, deals with him being in that interracial relationship with Khloe Kardashian. And where his relationship is a hot media item, like I said, with that Venus conjoined to Mercury. Now, Venus is also squaring his Pisces South Node, and that deals with his issues with drug addiction and also being caught up in scandals via the Keeping Up with the Kardashian series. So I'm thinking he probably regrets being on that show. Christina Aguilera, she has one of those loud Venus and Sagittarius voices that I speak about. Also, she's dealt with weight problems throughout her career. Oh, Marion. Marion has Venus conjoined to Neptune and Sagittarius, Quincunx, Taurus, North Node. So that points to a partner overstepping her boundaries, humiliation at the hands of a partner. So this points to his ex, April, getting with Little Fizz. Both of them happen to be Sagittarians. Also, his Venus, Quincunx, Taurus, North Node may have to pay a lot in child support. He may also be bad with spending money. Raven Simone has Venus in Sagittarius, so her Venus is conjoined to Saturn. It's in her second house, and Saturn's ruling her fourth. So that points to where responsibility was all on her to make money for the family. So she had to grow up fast, being on the Cosby show at such a young age, having to make money for the whole family. And she may have a chip on her shoulder as a result of that. She also has Venus opposition Chiron and Gemini, so some of her political sentiments, namely about race, has created a backlash in the media. Samuel Jackson has Venus in Sagittarius. Now he's hella loud and at times over the top. Nicki Minaj, she's another one with Venus conjoined to Neptune and Sagittarius. And Venus is also squaring her Virgo moon. It's forming a quincunx to her Chiron and Taurus. This is about her putting all her eggs in one basket with that new husband she has, what's his name, Kenny, Kenneth, something. suffering from the love will conquer all syndrome. She even says something like that or something to that effect. And this points to her attempting to groom or train a partner or a spouse more than likely to no avail because of that square. And that Quincunx with Chiron and Taurus can point to a partner who is going to bleed her dry financially. Jimi Hendrix had Venus in Sagittarius. His Venus was opposing Saturn and Uranus and Gemini, so he had a big problem with giving people the benefit of the doubt, namely his two-faced duplicitous manager 
And also he was in a number of bad recording contracts and he died because his lungs were full of red wine. So that Venus would represent the wine. The Venus in Sagittarius is the copious amounts of wine that they said were found in his lungs. And that Saturn in Gemini conjoined to Uranus, that points to his lungs. So that opposition is about his lungs being filled up with the red wine, which was the cause of his death. His life was very tragic. But he also has Venus and Sag trying Pluto and Leo, which made him very influential as a rock musician. Tina Turner, she has Venus and Sagittarius square Neptune and Virgo. And we all know her story with Ike Turner. So that's her being victimized by Ike, feeling trapped, living in fear, being humiliated, being at the mercy of his angry outbursts and eventually escaping that marriage. She also has Venus and Sextile to Libra North Node, which has contributed to her successful music career. And then we have the sexy ass Jeff Goldblum. So when I found out he has Venus and Sagittarius, I was like, no wonder why I always thought he was fine. And lastly, we have Willow Smith. So Willow Smith has that eclectic Venus and Sagittarius style that I speak of. And she also has that tomboyish style as well. So let me know what you think in the comments section. If you would like a reading, you could go to my website at rabina.com. And stay tuned for more videos. Peace and many blessings.